As Catholics, as Christians, we are called to be obedient to God's desires. We're called to be supple or docile to his will, like clay in the hands of a potter. But what do those words mean? What does it mean to be supple? What does it mean to be docile? And how do we do that? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that we love listener feedback. So if you've got questions about today's episode, or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is rbrugaman. Oh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> just testing. Ignition. <laughs> At sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org. Now, some of my friends will say, Chris, you say too fast. So I'm today, today, special episode, you get the email address at the top of the show a third time. Thrice. What's, what's like? That's probably right. Thrice. A thrice fold uh, proclamation <laughs> of the email address. Ignition. I-G-N-I-T-I-O-N at sfcatholic.org. Yeah, now listeners really do use that email address. Really yeah, do. Yeah, I gave it to you three like, times for yeah. goodness sake. Like, so seriously, people, if you have questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, please email Chris. You've heard that opener a time or two, Robin Bergman. Uh, Robin, good to see you again. Welcome back. Uh, we haven't done this for a little while. Just could you briefly, oh, in case we have new listeners, briefly introduce yourself? Robin Bergman. I am a farm wife to Spike for almost 30 years. We have seven kids. We have two grandbabies, one that's actually still in mommy's tummy, and I'm a mother-in-law, and I'm a daughter of the beloved. Amen. Yeah. I'm really, really trying to get into that role, that yeah. last one. Yeah. yeah. The most important. It's the most important. You'd think it'd be the easiest, but it might be it's the hardest. the hardest. Yes, yeah. it is. Amen. Um, so, Robin, uh, last week, for, for folks who listened to... By the way... Do you do you realize that these two episodes were last week was the five hundred and fiftieth episode of Ignition? Wow, five hundred and fifty episodes. That's um, exciting. Today is five fifty one. That means in four episodes, that might be you again. Ooh, five five five. I just I kind of I'm you like your numbers. Oh, person. I like like the when the odometer like when oh, you yeah, get you all told me that. I've told you when yeah, I yeah, get yeah. all the yeah, zeros. Yeah. You're I like, just come on, love, kids, everybody, watch, look, watch, watch, look, your turn, watch look. your turn, watch your turn. Jermaine, my wife is like, really? Like, what, I can just picture you as a little Chris, like back when we had the old fashioned oh, for odometers sure. and they all turned. They like, all turned? Oh, yeah, that was so great. Yeah. Now it's all digital. Yeah, it's not nearly it, as fun, just, but it's cool. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, numbers, yeah, numbers. Yeah, numbers. Maybe I'll come back numbers. for five, five, five. Five, 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 five. Coming up. They're just special one for that. In a month. Um, five, five, one is today. Mm -hmm. um, and you had proposed last week's topic. And mm -hmm. then as we're talking about what could we talk about this time, I mentioned that here in March, we are, and this is right up your alley too, because you should talk about, we haven't talked about this for a little while, you have a, you have a particular passion about getting lit. I love to be lit. <laughs> it's the best thing don't ever. Don't hang up, don't, don't change that <laughs> dial, don't stop the podcast. What does that mean, Robin Bruggeman? I love to live in truth, but I love to live liturgically, and Lent is a great liturgical season. It so. is, it is. And March in particular, we always have two... Um, Almost always, sometimes they get moved. Two solemnities, two great, mm -hmm. great feasts in particular. Um, the solemnity of St. Joseph, mm -hmm. the earthly or foster father of Jesus, yep. the guardian of the Redeemer, as mm -hmm. uh, the church, St. John Paul II in That's particular, but many others called him. Too. Um, and the Annunciation. So that mm -hmm. March 19th is the. Mo most people are aware of March 17th, Robin. St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day. Day. You're fittingly wearing yes. green. Yeah. Uh, getting ready. Mm -hmm. um, March 19th, though, is a solemnity. The mm -hmm. solemnity of uh, St. Joseph. Yep. And March 25th is the solemnity of the Annunciation. Yes. In which we celebrate the birth of Mary. No. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I'm like looking at you going... No. <laughs> That's September 8th. Uh, what's the Annunciation, Robin? It's when the angel announces to Mary that she will be the mother of God. Yes, yes. So, so I think of Annunciation, 
announce. Announce. And then, yeah, so it was Gabriel, what we read about Luke chapter two, mm-hmm. one, two. Um, Gabriel coming to Mary in Nazareth. Mm-hmm. Guess yeah. what? It's not how he starts off, but uh, hi. No, also not. Read, read, read the account. It's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so that's, come, that, that's <laughs> here in March. So two great solemnities. Uh, a little. This is kind of uh, inside, like um, inside baseball, like fun Catholic trivia. Solemnities, Robin. Mm-hmm. Why are solemnities, especially during Lent, such <gasps> a big deal? Because your Lent restrictions are lifted. Yes. Yes. Which means what? It means that if you gave up something like coffee or chocolate or something you could actually indulge but if you gave up sinning don't do, yeah, do, do, yeah, no, yeah. We talk- <laughs> <laughs> so yeah no your lent your lenten restrictions are lifted yeah. because it is such i mean a solemnity is the the biggest of all feast days that the church yeah. has so so, so last- we want to celebrate amongst the feast days. yep so last year the annunciation march 20 20- oh by the way why is it on march 25th um, because it would be nine months before, no, yeah, nine, yeah, nine months before Jesus' birth. Yeah. yeah. So March 25th <laughs> plus nine is December 25th. Yeah. Jesus' birthday, Jesus which birth. the yep. church is so awesome yep. that it so intentionally and yep. purposely plans yep. that out. Amen. So Amen. very cool connection. So last year, 2022, um, the Annunciation, March 25th, fell on a Friday. Mm-hmm. So I proposed to... Um, Father Haggerty, who was then our pastor yeah, at my parish, yeah. St. Lambert's in Sioux Falls. Father Haggerty, instead of a fish fry, we should have a steak fry. Did you guys do it? No. That would be, that would be, that's a very big cost difference for a parish. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. But, so yeah, you don't have to, your, your, your Lenten fasting from meat yep. are lifted. Abstaining so from yes, meat. abstaining. Yep. Did I say that wrong? Abstaining from meat. Yep. Yeah, so. Are lifted. Now, 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 that's, most, most people who know this kind of side of, Kind of inside Catholic baseball um, are aware of that. And this next thing, I'm, I'm. This next thing, for some reason, is a bit more controversial. They mm. got, I have friends in the know, friends who know the mm. faith, who disagree with us, but they're wrong. They're, 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 they're definitely wrong. But we haven't tied, have time to really dive in. So this year, March 25th falls on a Saturday. Okay. But Robin, when does solemnities? Lit- Wait, hold Ooh. on, hold oh, on. Oh, I know the answer. I think Casey. <laughs> Former seminarian for the uh, Diocese uh, of Sioux Falls. And we never get to see him. He's back he's, in the corner. He, yeah, I, I know you're watching, folks, controls. and you can't see him right now. He's not even on mic. But don't worry. I'll repeat what he has to say. Casey, when no do pressure, solemnities Casey. begin? The uh, sundown night. Sundown yeah. the night before. Yes, I knew. I knew Casey would get it yeah. right. And, and I, I did know. I knew the answer too. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Robin. I should have let you. No, I'm glad sorry. you put Casey all on right, the spot instead. Right. That was yeah, fun. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah. So this year the Annunciation starts on Saturday. So... Or is on Saturday, December 25th. But therefore the Annunciation, liturgically speaking, begins Friday. Sundown Friday. Friday night. So there is a clear case to easily be made well, and you that know... you could have a burger. Especially because you know when the Brueggemans eat supper. Right, exactly. You like guys are totally PM. in the clear. We're totally legit. Yes. No. <laughs> that is liti- living liturgically right there. Yeah, it is. Having See, is that not totally Friday. lit? <laughs> <laughs> now, whether or not we will, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, thanks for pointing that out, though. Yeah, yeah. That... Send your hate mail to ignition. <laughs> <laughs> if you disagree, tell me why. I want to know why. Because I, I'm. that's... that's you now, like we a don't, good debate? Just like everything else. Like, okay, I do want to say this, but sorry, we're going to get beyond this. We will get to docility. Um, like, people, so, okay, no meat, so I'm going to go to the Red Lobster and have the, you know, all you can eat fish mm. or all you can eat shrimp or all you can eat. But that's not really, you, sh- you should follow both the letter and the spirit of the yeah. law. Yep. Yeah. So, it still is Lent. So I, I think again, I think there's a clear, easy case to be made that one can have meat for supper mm-hmm. uh, as long as it's after sundown on Friday, March 24th. But we still yeah. remember it's the season of Lent, so yeah. you shouldn't be gluttonous for sure, right? Um, and yeah, just yeah, be aware of that. Keep it classy, people. Keep it classy. <laughs> that's no, a movie that's... reference for somebody who doesn't make oh, movie man, references. Oh man, don't do that to me. <laughs> you did it. You're the one who said it. Okay. 
Hey, by the way, March 25 is my mother-in-law's birthday. Oh, and really? And she's a listener. So happy birthday to my wonderful mother-in-law. Awesome. So she shares that special solemnity. And it's kind of funny because then since she, her birthday's on that solemnity, she when it falls during Lent, yeah, does it, she's still yeah, okay. She's good. She still gets birthday cake. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> <gasps> what? There's a big dilemma. This is this. By the time folks hear this, we're past this point. Big dilemma at the Bergwald House this year, Robin. What is it? Mercedes is our, Mercedes is our youngest. Oh, and hi to Mercy. She's in my class. That come up. And, Mer- and Mercy's birthday is February two twenty two, February twenty second. Yeah. Which this year falls is it a Friday? Ash Wednesday. Ash, Ash Wednesday. Wednesday. I have had kids with birthdays on Ash Wednesday. I gave birth on Ash Wednesday. Mercy was born on Ash Wednesday. I so Jermaine have a gave good birth on Ash Wednesday. Story about that. Jermaine's given so, birth on Fridays in Lent too, for that matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, we struggle with that. I actually have um, three kiddos that their birthdays always fall during Lent, and one of them is falling on Easter this year. Oh, that's not Lent, and, just so you know. Yeah, okay. yeah. But you know what I'm saying. But we oh, that is a dilemma. Do they get their birthday cake and celebration or not? It's really hard, yeah, isn't so it? Because yeah. that's like their little solemnity totally. day. But then right. you want to observe Lent. So, so that's a, a good a, question. As, 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 as at the time we're recording, as of this recording, uh, Monday the twentieth might be the day in which we observe. You know, oh, there you know, we go. We observe. We're going to yeah. transfer the Feast of Mercy's birth yeah. back two days, so yeah. we can. So, because the twenty first is Mardi Gras. You yeah, know? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the studio. Back, back in at the, the ranch. Yeah. <laughs> um, so docility. Um, connect the dots here. We we got down that rabbit hole because I brought up the two these two great solemnities <laughs> um, of Saint Joseph great and the Annunciation. Great examples of docility. Great example. So, what do you mean by that? Yeah. so? Great examples of docility. Say more about that, Robin. Well, I think um, Saint Joseph foster father of jesus mary's husband and then our blessed mother herself are just such great witnesses and examples to docility because they they show us um what it looks like to follow where god is leading them and and in accepting what god asks them to do Mm. and so you're going to tell us more about docility but that is, I guess, I think a great picture of that, especially the Annunciation when Mary, you know, the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and, you know, announces this amazing, probably absurd sounding thing to her. And she, but still is like, okay. What does she say? Do you remember at the end? The last. May it be done unto me. I am the handmaid of the Lord. I am Lord. the handmaid of the Lord. May, May it be done, done unto be me. according to thy word. Yeah. Um, or thy will sometimes. Yeah. So Latin, fiat voluntis tua. May your will be done. Yes, I have it tattooed <laughs> on my arm. You have a tattoo on your arm. We were going to talk about that one day. Here we go. Right Here we go. It's perfect. Yep. Yeah, I tattooed it on my arm. I think <clears throat> it's so beautiful and it's hard to live by that. But but Mary is our perfect, perfect, beautiful example of that. She literally yeah. is, uh, among human persons, the perfect, mm-hmm. the example of perfect Docility. Yes. Um, Saint Joseph, um, n- not having the the singular grace of the immaculate conception that Mary had, but Saint Joseph, still one of the great saints mm-hmm. uh, in the history of the Church, easily one of the great saints in the history of the Church. Uh, he also was docile mm-hmm. to the will of God. We see that yeah. well, when do you when when you think of Joseph's docility, what, what does anything in particular come to your mind? Um, well, yeah, a couple. I mean. Um when he accepts and agrees to continue on with taking Mary as his wife. Yep. And then also I would say the other one that pops in my mind is the flight to Egypt, yep. you know, where it's like, Oh, I need to get up like right now in the middle of the night and take Jesus and Mary and keep them safe. Yep. He's docile to what he's received from the Lord and he accepts it and does it. Yep. In both cases, dreams. Yeah. Uh, in which um, God uh, revealed his will through an angel to Joseph. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's he's mm-hmm. do- docile. I, I love the, and, and supple. I mean, there's nothing yeah. about the word supple that just, yeah, th- that I whole idea that. Of, of, of moist clay yeah. in the hand of the potter. You know, I just, I, I can see right, like the idea of play or silly putty. Yeah. I, I've rarely worked with Play-Doh. clay, but silly putty. I had to put that in my ears when I was oh, a kid all gosh. the time. Oh yeah. gosh, No, I had to. <laughs> Tubes in my ears. Back oh, in the day, that's okay. what you did. Okay, I thought you were just like a little kid, just playing. Oh, no, 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 I, didn't, like, I didn't put up my nose or something okay, like well that. Okay, well, yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> um, but 
but you know you touch it and it just as soon as you touch moist clay or silly putty it stays it, 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 it's indented it yeah. it, 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 it for, forms to your finger or to, to or your, your ear yeah or your ear exactly <laughs> and that's what we're called to do mm-hmm. with regards to the will of god to just yeah. perfectly be imprinted by his hand when he touches oh, so there's so a there's a story um, that I share all the time of a conversation that you and I had now, I don't know, three years ago, years ago or mm-hmm. so, just out in the parking lot of the Cathedral of St. Joseph, which is right next to the Dawson offices here in Sioux Falls. Uh, and I've told it many times, to be honest, as an example of docility. Do you have permission to do that? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> No, this, we don't have HIPAA here. <laughs> I, I, copyright, Robin Bruggeman, 2019. No, I, no, I know. I have this friend, and this is what happened to her. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I do. Because most Continue of them, on. <laughs> um, well, do you want to tell the story, or do you want me to tell your story? Tell my story. Seriously? Fine. I want to hear what it's like to have my something about me told. All right, fine. So Robin and I were talking. I'll stop you if something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Rob and I were talking. Uh, I can still. I think it was right outside. I think it was right outside my car. Um, I feel like it was like it wasn't too hot. It was probably like a late spring, early summer day is what I think it was. For some reason, I feel like it was midday. It's probably a Friday. Probably because I was here on campus. Um, and just talking about y- your sense that the Lord was calling you to something and talking through that. And what you said was, uh, "This is my version of it. I don't know yeah. if it's exactly Let right, but it's pretty close." Robin, like, uh, if you're listening, she she was patting her, I think, right shoulder. Um, I got, I've got a callus here. I'm like, what? What do you got? Well, the Holy Spirit keeps poking me, and I keep ignoring him. So a callus is building up. Mm-hmm. So in fact, yeah, in fact, I'm not a real callus, people, but this is just a figure of speech. Yeah. So you were spiritual being, callus. You I were, love it. <laughs> you weren't being docile. In fact, no. In fact, you I weren't was being not docile. docile. But just that all. image of the Holy Spirit. It's not like the Lord had, had uh, he didn't appear to you in a vision, mm-hmm. uh, in a dream, as he did yeah, Joseph. No. Uh, an angel wasn't sent to you as mm-hmm. as Gabriel was to Mary. But so you were just aware um, yeah. as, as a praying person, um, seeking to walk with the Lord, mm-hmm. you were just aware that he was... Yeah, I was aware of what shoulder. appeared to be a nuisance at the time. Right, <laughs> right, right. Um, and I just love that as a, as a metaphor for how the Lord, again, now the irony there is you were, in fact, you were not, had not been docile, yeah, but you're finally yeah. like, okay, fine, I'm yeah. tired of this callus. <laughs> um, Do kindly stop tapping me, please? <laughs> please, please. But that's how, that, that again, the, that idea of suppleness, or yeah. the, the, the potter is gentle. Yeah. As as the clay mm. is spinning on on the on the wheel, yeah, on the wheel. There's a name for that, probably. But anyways, yeah, the, the clay wheel, <laughs> no, yeah, something. So. Um, yeah. it, it, he's he's gentle because he want, doesn't want to destroy his creation. Yeah, yeah. So he's very gentle, which is and that that that's why I love the image because mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit was just gently, but insistently, yeah. but gently, yeah, quote unquote, tapping, tapping. you on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So yeah, did I get it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. did. Yeah, and the and the tapping kept on for a long time. Yeah, until you. Apparently, I became docile. <laughs> responded. <laughs> I responded and yeah. tapped into that gift that can be available. So, so when you so just from your own experience, then before, since then, so when you think about being docile, being mm-hmm. supple. Mm-hmm. Uh, being clay in the hands of the potter. What does that mean in your own life, other than that um, significant, profound yeah. um, experience? I think it's just an openness and an openness with receptivity. Mm. You know, I think we can be open. Like, <clears throat> well, and I think everyone would be like, well, of course I want what God wants. Silly. I know I'm supposed to do that. But we can be close to that even though we think we're being open. So I feel like there's a there's a difference between I'm open with strings attached, mm-hmm. with the freedom to close the door, mm-hmm. and then there's an openness with receptivity. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that is the right word, oh, but I yeah. think that is probably what changed in me. I didn't even know the word docile would have. Now I look back on this journey I've been on, especially the last um, few months, and I go, oh my God goodness 
that is what's been going on. And I think it has just been this receptivity to, Mm -hmm. okay, God, I'm ready to um, really see things your way and be open to what you want to show me and how you want to mold me. Amen. How you want to mold me. And it's, you know, I know you opened with talking about the clay and I had written that down and that image has come to me a lot. Um, Are we going to let him mold us? And, you know, I also, something I heard recently was we can tend to want him to mold us. Right. But when we think like that, we're thinking of how we want him to mold us and not being open to how he's he will mold us. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Did I say that right? Yes. So there's the difference there. Of course we want God to mold us, but not with what the way we think it should look or be. It's letting him actually, just being free and just saying, okay, I'm a puddle of muck. You mold me into something beautiful and just be receptive to what he makes of us. So this, this actually connects with a point that we talked about at the end of last week's episode about concupiscence. Remember I was near at the second half of the episode at least we're talking about um how how you respond to the question why does the lord just take away my sinful mm-hmm. desires now the interesting thing to, to the point that you're just making right here with regard to docility and sort of that the act of receptivity lord how did you put it just now not not how i want but how you want to what how did you just do you remember how you just put it Okay, so rewind the tape make it, oh, we can't do that make us what he wants us to be I as opposed what to what say. we want yeah, to be yeah yeah which um, I think whether we realize it or not, we're trying to be in control of what well, we exactly. want the outcome we to be. We are trying to be in control. So this is an experience that I've had. Kind of, This goes back to what we were talking about last week. Where, Lord, would you just take this thing in in my life? Take this away. And and there have been time, some instances where I've begged for years, Lord, take this, mm-hmm. this sinful inclination from, again, mm-hmm. we talk about, he gives me the grace to avoid the sin. But I still, even though I might avoid the sin, I still have a sinful desire. And I'm like, why are you not turning it? Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, meanwhile, back in the ranch, when I'm not, I'm not realizing how, because I'm so focused on this thing, mm. he, in fact, has been healing me of these other yeah. things over here, yeah. so to yeah. speak, in yeah. my life. And that, yeah. like, okay, Lord, I know that you're giving me everything I need to avoid sin. Um, the particular ways that you desire to perfect me now, to purify me now, let it be done to me according to that mm-hmm. word. Yeah. Yet voluntas yeah, tua. So I was just going to say that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah that, that, I mean, that to me, there's a, there's a different connection there. Yeah. That's a way in which I am subtly still a control enthusiast, mm-hmm. even as I strive to grow in humility and let the Lord work in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I still want to be in control. Uh, you need to fix this in me right now. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lord, are you there? Mm-hmm. Fix this in me. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't literally have quite that tone spiritually. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I do. Um, most of the time, not. But still, that's still me trying to exercise control as opposed to being... Das. Again, our, our posture yeah. here is the same. Yeah. Open hand, hands yeah. open. To um, being receptive. To being receptive. And really, when you think about it, the even the posture itself of if you picture yourself just being receptive with your hands open, as opposed to your your fists closed, yep. it's kind of exhausting. Yep. It's tiring to fight that off or to be not receptive. And when we're receptive, the, we start to see the beautiful things God wants to do for us. And with us and through us, so. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, Robin, we got about four How minutes so left. Fast? Well, because we talked a lot about eating meat and Lent. Oh, on... that's right. Which is important. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, docility, suppleness, clay in the hand of the potter. Any other um, observations, insights come to your mind or questions about what that means in the life of, of a Catholic, of a Christian? I don't think so. Yeah. You just, you fill in with all your good <laughs> wisdom here. You did this last week too. Well, you're the one that has all the good stuff to share. Oh my gosh. So I think, um, how to, going back to, this is similar to the, the, the end of the episode last week. How, how Last week, how do we overcome concupiscence, the desire mm-hmm. to sin that we'll have? This week, how do we grow in docility? Well, practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier, there's something actually that you had said early on that I wrote down and we didn't come back to. So now oh, good. I what think is this it? is me being docile right now. I think I, I think the Holy Spirit just reminded me. Good job. I, he <laughs> tapped me on my shoulder. Good practice. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. Um, so you talked about how there's things just under the surface that we're not aware of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe, maybe that was last week's. Or I don't know. I don't, you said it sometime mm-hmm. as we're recording. Um, just pr- 
just praying for the grace to be self-aware and just practicing self-awareness. Mm-hmm. Like, to what degree am I being open? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I might think I'm being open, but am I really being yeah. open? So to stop and step back from time to time, Lord, help me to see, am I really being receptive? Am I really mm-hmm. being docile? I desire that. I think I'm growing in it. But maybe there are areas in my life in which I'm not soft. Maybe there's areas in my life that I've hardened myself yeah. to your will. You know, I'm glad you point that out because I think we can tend to think this only applies in areas where the Lord is maybe asking me to trust him or step out more in a way that maybe is obvious that he wants me to do something for him. So which would be like more us in ministry can be more obvious in that way. But it does apply to um, maybe it's a relationship mm-hmm. or an area that we're struggling with where we can be more open mm-hmm. to that. Amen. So and I and I don't I don't think we could ever fully be open, could we? I mean, in our concupiscence, <laughs> can we um, fully can we be fully open? Maybe some people can. I just feel like in my own life, it just seems like it's always like, okay, I can grow more in that, and then I think, okay, I'm kind of figured out. It's like, oh no, no, no. Yeah. There's more yet. There's still more there. There's still more there. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. I I think it is possible. Um, I, I think it's possible for us to be essentially fully perfected in this side of death. In that, I think wow. it's exceedingly rare. Okay. Um, so this is outside this, of like a monastic life or something. Uh, <laughs> where pure, it's more even for monks, I think wow. it's exceedingly exceedingly rare. But I think, but I do think huh. it's possible. So this is kind of really the question. Um, does everybody have to go to purgatory after death? Well, I think mm. the vast majority of us do because that purgatory is that final purification, yeah. that, that final refining mm-hmm. that we talked mm-hmm. about last week. Um, but but I do think it's possible for us. For, and unfortunately, this is usually, unfortunately, well, yeah, unfortunately, uh, from one's perspective at least, this is usually, this happens in the, the, the refining crucible of suffering. I think mm. the people, if there's anybody who is fully docile um, at some point in their life, it's because of profound suffering they've wow. experienced, I think. Wow. Yeah, I, I think that'd be the case. So. so interesting and fascinating. Yeah. So that might be something for us to talk about. I was just going to say, I think we need to talk on yeah. that. Um, the, yeah. Yeah. The, the power of suffering, what we can do with it and uh, for ourselves and for others. But, Robin, thanks for being here today. Yeah. And folks, that, that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email us, ignition at sfcatholic.org with any questions about today's episode or ideas for future ones. And until next time, may God bless you.